Hey everybody, I hope you guys are doing well and I hope that you guys have been enjoying the last five days of the new year. Um, I normally don't do videos at all. Um, I have a blog and I will be committing to posting a little bit more regularly on that so that friends and family back home, uh, you guys can keep up with me a little bit more about what life is like and what God's been doing uh, the last couple of months um, at the BI up here in New York and what life will look like for me when I come back to Florida and when I graduate and all that good stuff. Um, but God's just been doing some really cool things um, since the last few days, in the last few days, and um, I didn't want to wait till Saturday to make a blog post about it. So I thought I would just make this video and share um, some of the things that he's been teaching me. So, um, yeah. Um, so the first thing, so yesterday in chapel, um, one of our staff members at Word of Life, Mark Strout, shared a message from Acts chapter 9, verses 19 through 25. And I'm going to read the passage, because uh, it's really short, um, to you guys, just so you can ha have a little bit of background of what he was talking about. Um, and then I'll kind of share like what I got out of it and what made yesterday so cool. Um, but so Acts chapter 9, verses 19 through 25, and it says... For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus, and immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon this name? And has he not come here for this purpose, to bring them bound before the chief priest? But Saul increased all more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. When many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. But their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night in order to kill him. But his disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. And so, a uh, really short passage. Uh, most people, most uh, I'd say most people are familiar with it. Um, Paul escaping um, while he was sharing the gospel in Damascus um, in some of the synagogues. And um, Mark Strout uh use that message or that that story to talk about this concept of rope holders um the the disciples in the story were letting paul down uh over the wall um in a basket and they were holding the ropes and uh he kind of used that to correlate to our lives as christians as believers how we all have um people who are supporting us and um in a sense holding our ropes in our lives uh, whether it be through prayer or financially or through words of encouragement or just rooting us on through facebook um different things like that where we have people who are supporting us um, and are running alongside us um, in this race and um in that same um same vein us being responsible to be rope holders for other people uh, by doing those same things uh, and serving alongside of them as well. And so he challenged our class um, with uh, the thought of prayerfully considering another student um, on our campus who we would commit to being a rope holder for for the rest of the year. And um, and so I was thinking about it. I was like, wow, OK. Uh, I didn't want it to be someone who I'm already obligated to be a rope holder for, um, girls in my suite or people who I'm already genuinely pretty close to. Um, but I wanted it to be someone who I, I hadn't really gotten to know very well, someone who um, I could come alongside and support them and let them know that, hey, you know, I don't know you that well. I, I'd love to get to know you, but uh, I want to let you know that I'm committed to pray for you and support you throughout the rest of this year. Uh, and thankfully, God did lay someone in my heart and I did go up to them and, and I told them, that I would be praying for them and that I would be committed to being their rope holder uh, for the rest of the year. Um, but uh, about an hour or two after that, I went to my mailbox and it was just a routine check, just looking for grades or mail or whatever. And there was an anonymous note in there from someone who um, just told me, they were just encouraging me and they said, you know, um, continue to have faith in the Lord, even on your darkest days and um, was kind of the gist of the, of the note. And, um, they had $25 in there for me to put towards my missions reality mission trip in April. Um, and I was just like, wow, that's, that's so sweet. Um, I would never think that someone would think of me, um, of all people to pray for, let alone give financially. And if it was a student, I know we're all broke. <laughs> so, um, just, the thought that someone would be willing to sacrifice whatever that money would have been used for to get towards me um, in support of my mission trip was just uh, super humbling and very encouraging to me. Um, and But that wasn't it. That I thought that was already enough to be like, wow, like that's so cool. God, thanks for that. Um, but 
about an hour after that, a student came up to me, a first year student came up to me and we're friends on Facebook and we're, we have quite a few uh, mutual friends. So just because of that, I'm not going to share her name because I don't want to embarrass her or make her feel like she did it for um, recognition or anything like that because I know that wasn't her heart at all at all um but she wow such a sweetheart I think I might have talked to her maybe three times this whole school year um where we actually sat down and talked um so it's it's not like we interact with each other a lot um uh, where she would ever think to think of me or pray for me um but she came up to me and she said that after listening to Mark Strout share that message that God laid me on her heart and that she wanted to pray for me and be a rope holder for me and um, not only that but she wanted to help me financially uh, for missions reality and so she gave me a lot of money and uh, told me to go back to my room and count it there and so I went back to my room and I was getting ready to study and all that and I opened it and she gave me a hundred dollars for missions reality and so like within two hours I got a hundred twenty five dollars for this trip and for people who are already like 100% supported or people who are they've already hit their 50% deadline and all of that like that doesn't really seem like a lot to anyone um but for me it was a lot and it meant a lot and honestly it, it brought me to tears to see just how gracious God had been to provide that for me um because before that I was at like 3% support raised uh for Mission's Reality and I, I prayed that I would be able to say that I would have been just as thankful um had I been already fully supported um, but it was just the thought that someone would think so much of me and care so much about me to want to support me in that way. Um, it just meant a lot. And even to the person, I don't know who that person was who gave the 25% or the $25, but, um, to whoever you are, you know who you are. Um, I, I am so thankful. Um, but it was just in that moment where I just realized, wow, um, I've taken a lot of small acts like that throughout this school year for granted where God has clearly shown himself to me and provided things for me and have shown that I have so many rope holders in my life that I have not given due recognition to um who I have not thanked or um really thought about much um and it just made me think how much I've relied on myself and how much I've relied on my own strength and the, my own accolades and the things that I've done for myself or the things that I've come from the things that I've been through to deem myself worthy I guess of love or friendship or recognition or uh you could fill it in I didn't really feel like I was being completely myself before Christmas break I tried and I I want to say that I was doing the best that I knew how to do given the circumstances that I was in with different health things and um being not being used to snow or being cold or anything like that but um just over this christmas break god's really broken my heart over a lot of things and has really taught me um what it really means to depend on him and not myself um over break i had to learn a lot of hard lessons i one of my closest friends decided that they didn't want to be my friend anymore for uh a few reasons and um, and I didn't, it wasn't anything on my part necessarily that I did, but just where God seems to be leading them in life, they felt like this friendship wasn't necessarily something that they wanted to continue. And I, it really broke me because that would be one of those people you'd consider a best friend, someone that you wouldn't think would ever leave you or, uh, disappoint you or leave your side. And in an instant they were gone and they weren't a part of my life anymore. And um, it just made me think really hard about where I've been placing value, um, especially in relationships. There are people who, um, it's like I am overly enthusiastic to go and try and build a relationship with them uh, and the other people I don't seem to pour in as much interest. And it really was convicting to me because it made me think, well, all of these people are my brothers and sisters in Christ. And so there shouldn't be a difference or a degree or a level of friendship where I can say, oh, this person, like, oh, they're super awesome. But this other person, eh, I mean, I might speak, I might not speak. Um, like, I should love them the same. And I mean, as far as the whole best friend thing goes or close friendship goes, like that comes just with discernment and proximity. If you spend more time with someone, obviously you'll be closer to them. But uh, the baseline of it all is there should not be a difference in the way that I love this one person. Um, who I just see walking down the hallway 
versus this one person that I see um, every day. And so that just really challenged me to really think about where I find my contentment and where I get my affirmation from um, and who I'm proving myself for or to. Um, am I doing the things that I do because I want to earnestly seek the Lord and glorify him in everything that I say and do and how I interact with other people? Or am I doing it so that I can become someone's best friend or be someone's friend? Um, even today, after at dinner, I tried to sit with a group of people and um, and I don't normally sit with the same group of people or interact with the same group of people. I kind of like a floater and kind of do my own thing. But um, but yeah, I sat with them and it didn't really seem like they were interested in talking to me or being around me or wanting to have anything to do with me, to be honest. And it wasn't, it's honestly not the first time that this has happened with this particular group of people. Um, and nothing on them. I kind of just took it as, uh, gave them the benefit of the doubt that maybe they were just in deep conversation and didn't really want a, another person around. Um, but there was a temptation there to become um, very emotional and um, self-conscious about what am I doing wrong? Why don't people want to be my friend? Why don't people want to be around me? Um, but it was so cool because today in quiet time we were learning about and we were in chapter, and we were in Mark and we were reading about the story of the paralytic and his friends getting him to Jesus and the faith that they had and just reminded me of like wow like I want to surround myself with people like that um, where they they have my back they they're my rope holders and I can be their rope holders and we can stir each other on towards righteousness and we can just be friends like just be just like turn up for jesus you know and um and it doesn't matter if i live in the same dorm as them or if we have the same classes or anything like that like i just want to be a friend and so it just made me think i've been so focused on finding that best friend that person i can say after my years at the bible institute that person will be in my wedding or that person will be my friend until we we go to the grave kind of thing um because it seems like so many people have that friend and i don't um and it made me think that there was something wrong with me and i've just come to realize that I need to focus more on am I being a friend um, I'm not saying that I'm not now but my focus shouldn't be so much on who what I can get from other people but like how am I using the resources and the talents and the abilities God has given me to serve the people around me serve the girls that I live with in Europe and to all these other the girls that I interact with in class and all these different things like my focus shouldn't be so much on myself and it's been so much on myself this whole year and um I don't know, the last four days being back have been so amazing in realizing that it's not about me at all. Um, and I was committed to making sure that the things I learned over break would not just be a spiritual high moment that would go away by the weekend. Um, every morning this week when I get up, I have been praying and asking the Lord, hey, you know, I can't lie. Being still for five hours kills me. I can't do it. I literally have to be doing something. And um, it's a struggle sometimes to stay awake. Even and sometimes it's because of the medicine that I've been taking, um, and sometimes it's just because I'm exhausted. And I was like, God, like I genuinely want to learn about this class, and I want to learn more about Your Word and be able to apply it, and not just have it be head knowledge for a test. But I really want to grow in my relationship with You. Can You please help me to be attentive in class and to get the most out of quiet time and just to really be all here in this moment where I am right now at the Bible Institute in New York, and. God was so faithful in answering that. Uh, I haven't fallen asleep this whole week. And not to say that I won't slip up and doze every now and then, like, as the weeks go on. But I can see, how, even in small prayers like that, God has been faithful to me and has shown himself to be the best rope holder, <laughs> I guess, um, that I have ever had. And that He he's faithful and he loves me and he, he cares for me and he's willing to answer those requests if I'm honest with him about the things that I'm struggling with and not trying to put on this facade like I have all together and um it's just been amazing just to see um uh, and just one one decision to put all the things that I've been going through aside and just trust Jesus and just cling to the cross how quickly my mind has changed about everything even the snow I I'm from Florida y'all know that and y'all know I don't like being cold but I just been thinking about um the psalm that talks about how God has made us whiter than snow and there's a few other passages that talks about snow and and I just prayed like you know what God I don't understand why you thought it was necessary to make white flurry of things fall from the sky and why it had to be freezing for it to happen but you saw good in that and I don't see good in it at all but you did and so I, I'm just trusting that you will help me to learn to live with it 
whether you give me a reason for it to be good or not i pray that you'll just allow me to be content where i am and not to complain and not to have such a griping uh attitude about the weather or about anything that i have to, i can't change it so i pray that you'll allow me to be a good testimony in the midst of it and i got back from indiana and when i tell you i have not had a negative thought about snow since i've been back um uh, yes yeah, a little nippy outside but it's almost like he gave me an extra layer of skin like yo court you know what i know it's cold but i got you today you know <laughs> um and it's just been so cool to see how um how my dedication to being more diligent in the word and and really trying to apply these things have really changed transformed my heart towards a lot of things and not being so negative or pessimistic and so I don't want to go on a rabbit trail with you guys. I just I just say all that just to say like God is so good. He has he has answered the smallest prayer request for me and so uh with this money that I just turned in for Mrs. Reality, I probably I'm not sure where I'll be at. I guess I'll be at, I'll be higher than three percent. Um I didn't make my fifty percent deadline, but when I tell you I'm so content um, I have such a great prayer team, prayer support team. And while I don't have the greatest financial support team at the moment, um, I couldn't have asked for a better support team because I could have all the money raised and have my heart be completely away from the Lord and not be focused on, uh, really serving him when I go to whatever country he leads me to go to for this trip. Um, and so it's just been really cool. This whole process of missions reality and this whole process of adjusting to the North and, um, being cold all the time and snow camp about to happen and I'm, I'm i love camp guys so like i'm super excited for snow camp but just different things that he's been uh preparing before how he's just kind of lined different things up um and showing me how how desperately i need him and i have to rely on him for everything and so yeah i don't want to write a book or you know keep you guys forever but i just wanted to share that with you guys because it's been so cool um just to see how he's rewarded my faithfulness and just seeking him instead of relying on my emotions and the circumstances around me um and for my rope holders there's so many of you and there's too many of you to name personally but um i just i'm so thankful for you guys and the people who pour into my life my disciple karen smith super oh my gosh woman of god okay i love her so much she wow i no words i really don't have any words to say for her she is so like a she came in my life when i needed her um i'm so thankful that god gave me her because she is i have learned so much from her um and i just enjoy meeting we meet tomorrow i'm so excited i just i love her so much um and she has just she has no idea how much of a blessing she has been to me um and um to my dc ashley and um my mom and dad down in florida uh at word of life with my biological parents but also my my wobie parents lynn and rich andrews they always i will they will always be um they will always have a special place in my heart because they've done so much for me and just support so much into me and i'll always remember them for that and kyle gray and just motivating me through camp i would have never gotten through camp without without him and his encouragement through staff life and there's just so many other people sarah Bupa, um Kayla Miller, there's just, there's so many of you, I can name you all, um, that have been rope holders for me, um, and I appreciate even the smallest things, the smallest text messages, the phone calls, the, the Facebook messages, um, the smiles, the hugs, um, the nights where we cry, there's just so much that you guys have done to help me get where I am, and I'm just thankful to see, uh, 23 years of life, never thought I would make it here, um, but I'm excited to see how God is going to use me um, as we finish out this fall semester and go into spring semester and uh, go into snow camp and missions conference um, but yeah yo check out Acts chapter 9 yo it's super cool um, and yeah I'll challenge you guys with the same challenge that Mark Stroud gave us like just really pray about the people that you know are holding your ropes in your life and have been encouraging you um, behind the scenes and um, if you haven't told them already tell them like reach out to them and let them know that you're thankful and uh, that you love them and that you appreciate them and then you know in that same vein go out and find someone that you can be holding ropes for too um so that's it i'm not gonna be like super long i'm not trying to preach a sermon or anything like that but um i just wanted to share what god's been doing so i hope that it was encouraging or whatever um but yeah um follow my blog um this is soul searching at wordpress.com and i will be posting momentarily but you can just follow me on facebook because i usually post it to there so like you know just 
it'll be around. So, um, I hope you guys have a good night, and I'll talk to y'all later.